Okay, so let's continue describing motion. Coming up with concepts, things we can measure, things we can throw into calculations, equations, relations, graphs, and describe motion. And we'll get into the why of motion. But remember in kinematics, there's time, but there's instants, the moment, now, now. And there's an interval or a duration, an elapsed time, from now to now. In space, there's three concepts. There's the location at any instant. There's the change in location between two instants, independent of the path, displacement. Distance, how far did you go along the path to get there? How much exercise did you get? And we've talked about those. Now let's talk about rate of travel. There's velocity at an instant, and then there's average velocity between two instants. There's speed at an instant, and there's average speed. And you have to be really careful, it's going to be tricky. We'll get into rate of change later. So critical is that we draw this out, not just as variables, not just as an algebra problem, but we visualize it, the way we do that is we draw pictures to show the process. We need to show key moments or instants or states, events, states um, and label them one two three four and we need to choose and show the coordinates is this way positive or is that way positive it's up to you as long as you choose, choose that and you're consistent so let's go over here to rate of travel uh, rate of travel at an instant so rate of travel at an instant we can talk about oops, two things we can talk about the instantaneous velocity or just the velocity uh, at that instant and that is simply the speed and direction. So in your car, it would be the speed that you're going and the direction you're going. That's what we mean by velocity. That's different than instantaneous speed. Speed's just the speed. Look at the speedometer. You can be going 60 miles an hour. This doesn't matter which way. Your speed's still 60 miles an hour. However, if I go 60 miles an hour this way, I might call that negative 60 miles an hour. This way, I might call it positive 60 miles an hour. That's velocity. It's the only difference right there, okay? So if you know the velocity, you know both the speed and the direction. How do I specify the direction? Again, by plus and minus, when we're talking about one dimensions. When we get into two and three dimensions, we'll talk about vectors. But plus and minus, which way is plus? Whichever way you choose, which way is minus? The other way, that's all. It's up to you, okay? You know, if you're reading someone else's paper, know which way they choose to be positive in terms of direction. Okay, so how do we write that as a variable? Well, as a variable, we can do v at that time, at an earlier time. We could write v at a later time. We could write v at time one. We could write v at time two. We could write v at time three. You could use i and f, but I really recommend not, because it doesn't generalize very well. Also, when we get to three dimensions, or two dimensions, we have a little half arrow, or sometimes a full arrow, but an arrow on top of the v, which means a vector. We'll get to vectors, but that's anything with an amount and a direction. With one dimensional motion, you can write it like this, or you can just write it like this and know that that includes the direction. If I do that, my speed is just the amount. So one way to deal with that would be v at time two like that. How much? OK, cool. So how do I show that on a motion diagram? Well, to show this on a motion diagram, in one dimension, I start here, and maybe I go back here, and then I go back here, and then I go back here, and go here. What you do is you draw an arrow tangent to the path at that instant, uh, in the direction of motion, and a longer arrow means faster. And I have something important to say about this. Some books make a really horrible choice, and a very confusing choice, of saying, okay, here I am. I'm here, at state one, moment one, and then I end up over here at state two, and I'm going over here to state 
three, and then I speed up, and maybe I go back to state four, and I keep going, whatever. Now, if I just showed you that, all I know is that at time one, I'm here, at time two, I'm here, at time three, I'm here. Tell me the times, fine, I can figure out the change in time. Uh, I can choose positive, it's whichever way. If I call that plus x, I'm fine. Uh, just because I want to change things up. And I can look at the displacements, and I can look at the distance. How do I show the velocity? Well, at time one, I did start moving out this way. I don't know if I started from rest. I just don't know. Uh, maybe at this instant, I'm moving this way. So I would draw it. You can either draw it like here and call that V2, because I'm moving from 2 to 3, because these are sequential 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where I move. But do not draw it from, one, from 2 to 3. Don't draw V at state 2 as this. This is not a displacement. This is the velocity at that moment, and the length of the arrow just represents how fast you're going. It's just to give a sense. You can even draw it above the, the dot if you want, but often we draw the tail there. Okay, so don't do that. I mean, it might be, if you're going to turn around, you got to, the only way you can turn around is stop and turn around. So in this case, uh, V3 would equal zero because you turn around. V4, I don't know which way. Maybe I keep going this way. So V4, maybe this V4. Okay, and from the looks of it, I drew that a little longer than this, so I'm saying I've been going to the left faster than I was going here. So that's how we represent it. On graphs, then, x versus t, uh, it's the slope. dx dt. On V versus T, it's the point, the value. Here I have a zero velocity. Here I have a negative velocity. And we'll get to this more later. Okay? So we can represent it algebraically to work equations, and we can represent it graphically, but know the context, know the meaning, and we can show it on our pictures. Okay. And again, this the speed is just the, the how fast, independent of plus minus. OK, let's leave that and come over to this little tricky point over here. Now if I'm looking at the average rate of travel, not at an instant, but between or over an interval of time from one time to another, what's the average? You have to be careful. You can't do averages in the normal way uh, most of the time. Average velocity is defined as the displacement over the time. What's displacement? It's the change in position. Do I care how I got there? No. Right? So if I run around in a circle and I end up at the same place, boom, boom, what's my displacement? Zero. What's my average velocity? Zero. Why? Because I went positive and I went, was running negative. But you can't go the earlier velocity plus the later divided by 2, except for constant acceleration. So um, this is the definition. Okay. That's different than the average speed. And these are usually very different usually very different unless object uh, never goes the other way. If I always walk this way, then I keep adding to my displacement as I add the distance. But here I have a displacement to your left, and now a displacement to your right. I got plus, so I got minus, it gets all messed up. This one's harder to keep track of, but it is distance over time. 
and often it's a little tricky to, to put it to a uh, algebraic form. So very different, okay? And so specifically, maybe I'd have uh, something like x3 minus x2 over the time to get from 2 to 3. That's delta x from 2 to 3 is x3 later minus earlier. Or whatever. You can put it into that form if you need to. You can put it into this form. You can have lots of options. You have to just look at it and decide which way you go with that. Okay, that's how you do average velocity. Um, average speed, very different. So when you're doing a problem, don't look for an equation to plug into. That's, you know, that's uh, very rudimentary. That's not this level. Go back to the definition. Write it. Look at it. Take a baby step. What do you know? Put in information. Work it. Draw a picture. Look at it. And don't make like some guess leap. Uh, just trying to work algebra. Think about it. It'll come out. It'll start to reveal itself, just like the puzzle does. We'll talk about that. So, in the case when acceleration is constant, and by that I mean only, oops, only when acceleration is constant is the average velocity equal to your change of velocity, no, sorry, strike that, not the change. Your starting velocity plus your ending velocity in any two moments divided by two. The way you think of averaging two numbers, you add them up and divide by two. The only way you can do that here is if your acceleration is constant. We'll talk about that later in one dimensional. So be very careful with that. We will possibly make some use of that, but this is the fundamental definition. Average velocity is displacement over time. Um, average speed is distance over time. Of course, the units can be anything you want. Uh, meters per second. One meter per second is about two miles an hour, 2.2 miles per hour. Kilometers per second, kilometers per hour. So again, yeah, I'm just write that. One meter per second is about two miles an hour, 2.2. So, and that's about, well, we can that. Okay, so, um, yeah. So, well, well, let's just go and say, and a mile, it's super, super rough. A mile is about two kilometers, super rough, right? So that would be like four kilometers per hour, just to get a sense of how much, right? A kilometer is super roughly half a mile, 0.621, you know. Okay, last little thing here that is, um, we can see this on graphs, and let's go over here to the final point that as the way we take measurements is to look at actually two times. And the average velocity, which is the change in position, displacement over time, and we look at it at closer and closer times. The limit is delta t goes to zero, which you know that's the derivative, or dx dt, at that particular instant, at any instant. And that gives your instantaneous velocity, and of course that's the slope on the x versus t graph, which could be positive or negative. Um, so we'll work with this basic concept uh, soon, put it all together. Okay, cool.